Greetings. My name is Charles Fasellis. I am the Chief of Medicine at the Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Washington, D.C. The title of the article is Exercise Capacity and Atrial Fibrillation Risk in Veterans, a Cohort Study. It will be published in the May 2016 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Recent evidence from observational studies suggests a higher prevalence of atrial fibrillation in middle-aged and older elite athletes and those participating in long-term high-intensity physical activity when compared to the general population. There is also limited data suggesting that regular moderate intensity exercise may increase the risk of atrial fibrillation. It is reasonable then to assume that excessive exercise can be harmful. However, moderate intensity exercise, as recommended by national and international guidelines, along with the well-documented health benefits of exercise, regardless of age and comorbidities, diminish support that engaging in regular physical activity increases the risk for developing atrial fibrillation. Thus, our aim in the current study was to assess the association between cardiorespiratory fitness assessed objectively by the standardized exercise test and the incidence of atrial fibrillation in a cohort of middle-aged and older U.S. veterans. In this prospective study, our cohort included 5,962 middle-aged male veterans from the Washington, D.C. Veterans Affairs Medical Center. All participants were free of atrial fibrillation prior to or during the exercise stress test and had no ischemic response to exercise during the stress test. Exercise capacity was assessed by a graded exercise test and peak metabolic equivalents, or METs, were determined. Accordingly, we established the following four fitness categories based on age stratified quartiles of peak METs achieved. One, least fit, two, low fit, three, moderate fit, and four, high fit. Multivariate Cox proportional hazard models were used to assess the exercise capacity atrial fibrillation association. We used the least fit category as the reference group. The models were adjusted for age, BMI, blood pressure, medications, CVD risk factors, race, and history of alcoholism. Findings. During the median follow-up period of 8.3 years, 722 individuals developed atrial fibrillation. The Atrial Fibrillation Fitness Association was independent, inverse, and graded. Because the incidence of atrial fibrillation increases with advancing age, we assess the risk for individuals in our cohort less than 65 years and over 65 years of age. The impact of fitness was similar in the relatively young, less than 65 years of age, and older, 65 years of age or above individuals. These findings support that higher aerobic fitness lowers the risk of developing atrial fibrillation. The average exercise capacity necessary to realize these health benefits was just 6.7 METs. This level of fitness is achievable by many middle-aged and older individuals by daily exercises such as brisk walking. Moderate intensity exercises are effective in improving aerobic fitness regardless of age or comorbidities. Thus, exercise interventions for individuals at risk for atrial fibrillation may be implemented to prevent or at least attenuate the rate of atrial fibrillation incidence. Healthcare providers should advise their patients to engage regularly 
in moderate intensity physical activities or structured exercise programs designed to improve aerobic fitness. Brisk walking is the safest, most effective, and inexpensive way to increase fitness and improve health. Individuals should start slowly, even as low as 10 minutes each day, and add one to two minutes to their sessions each week. The goal is to accumulate a total of 150 to 200 minutes of aerobic activity each week. This can be achieved by walking briskly four to six times per week, 30 to 40 minutes per session. Our next project is to assess if fitness can attenuate the development of stroke or a major cardiac event in those with atrial fibrillation. In conclusion, the take-home message of this study is that moderate exercise, such as walking briskly four to six times per week, 30 to 40 minutes per session, is safe for all ages. It is also important to mention that physical activity is associated with some risk of injury and rarely death, especially in sedentary individuals. However, the risk of physical inactivity as far is far greater than that of physical activity. To reduce this risk even more, all individuals must consult their physicians prior to engaging in any exercise. Thank you for listening. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.